Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're glad to have you at WYTV7 Christian Broadcast. And man, we are in for a good show today. I've been waiting on this. Um, you have reached in the gap. I am your host, Keith Smith. And just to give you an update, uh, over the last 10 days, I had to have some surgery done. And praise God, everything went well. I came through the surgery well. And I never had a surgery in my adult life. I had one as a kid, and I, I don't really remember it. Uh, so I was a little nervous, a little apprehensive about it because I'd never been put to sleep, even playing football all those years. Nothing's ever happened that I've been put to sleep without just being sleepy. So I was a little nervous about it. My wife, she did a really good job, you know, helping calm my fears. And, and uh, you know, God had already made preparations for this surgery. The surgery went great. I just had my post-op visit today. Doctor says I'm healing well. Um, but the biggest thing with this surgery that really struck me as far as one of my fear factors uh, was the fact that they're going to be cutting on me and afterwards I'm going, I'm going to be experiencing pain. Well, if you've seen the other episodes, you already know I had a bout with opioids. I had an eight-year addiction to pain medication that God delivered me from. I didn't go to a rehab, a detox center, none of that. God did this. Well, I said, Lord, I prayed before. Uh, I said, Lord, you know I had this problem in the past. You've delivered me from it. But I'm a little scared about it because now something's going to happen in my body beyond my control that I might need this pain medication. So God had already made preparations for this as well, little did I know. So when I had the surgery, uh, they prescribed pain medication. I came home. Um, and like I say, God will already prepare you for future adversity. He was already preparing me to face this adversity years later. I've been over 11 years clean, and I said, Lord, I've had a streak going. I don't really want to get back into this. You know, do something or, or put someone in my life that can help me with this so it doesn't get out of hand and cause all this chaos to get before. God had to remind me of something, too. He says in Galatians 5 and 1, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberties where with Christ has set you free. And this is Paul speaking. But then he says, Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So God had to remind me, I've already set you free from this. And you don't have to be entangled with this anymore. So I've already made provisions for you. I've been to a lot of rehab centers to speak, and a rehab center, they, they teach people that once you're an addict, you're always an addict. You know, uh, once you have this problem, it's a disease in your life. Well, God had to show me that's not true. That when I set you apart from that, as long as you don't put your hands back to it, you don't have a problem. Well, that's the thing that I have been training my mind for years and years of sobriety now is this verse. But God had to show me, too, even when something comes in your life that you think will cause it that to happen, I've already planned for greater things. I went through this surgery, and even into my uh, recuperation, which is going well, praise God, I have not had to take any pain medication. So I give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory. He had already made provisions for this. You know, I, I, I didn't know how. I just know God was going to show up. Remember we talked in another episode about when you look for God in the small places, he will show up in the big problem. You expect that. You know, it started making me think about John chapter 9 when he healed the, the blind man. And he had been blind since birth. He knew nothing but how to be blind. And Jesus healed him. And when he healed him, the Pharisees didn't believe it. They didn't want to believe in Jesus. So they did an investigation on this. They brought the man's mother and father to him and said, you know, is this your child that's been blind but now he can see? And, and they said, listen, he's grown. You know, question him. Don't question us. And, and when they brought him in, they said, did you not know this man was a sinner? And he said, whether this man's a sinner or not, I do not know. He said, the only thing I know is now I was once blind, but now I see because of this man. I'm in that same boat today. I once was an addict, but I'm no longer one because God has set me free through his word, through his power, 
through believing in him. So I give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. He has prepared me for future adversity. Now, there's been an adversity I want to talk about today that has kind of been in the, the news a little bit, but it's been more on social media. And it's about this chicken sandwich craze. I mean, it is running rampant. And I don't know uh, if you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, so I'm going to do my best to explain it without, you know, bringing up the, the fast food chain. But there is a fast food chain now. And if you've been on Facebook, social media, you've seen all the videos about it. There's been a chicken sandwich craze. Well, I can say for one, I have had this chicken sandwich that everyone is talking about. And for me, in my opinion, it is the best chicken sandwich I've ever eaten in my life. And I had to wait 30 minutes to get it. And if you know me, as big as I am, much as I love to eat, I don't wait on food. But man, it was delicious. So it was so good, we went back and got another chicken sandwich the following day or two. Well, what I found out was the more the word got out about this idea, people were just flocking to this fast food chain. I mean, you couldn't get in. The whole lobby was full, drive through, back down to the road. They were even back down into the road that turns into the fast food restaurant. So I was like, man, this is crazy. But what happened was the demand for this great idea they had was so overwhelming, they had to stop selling. They had to stop selling for several reasons now. Uh, one of the reasons is they said they couldn't keep enough staff to keep to keep the business flowing. We went to one fast food restaurant and they had shut down the drive through and you had to go inside to order. A couple of days later, they didn't have staff to do it. They shut down the lobby on the inside and the only place you could go was the drive through But now the problem, the dilemma with this great idea is this. You can't get a chicken sandwich at this fast food restaurant because they're constantly running out. They can't keep them in stock. So I went in and asked the manager when I was looking for one, I said, you know, what's going on with the chicken sandwiches? Why can't we get chicken sandwich? He said, well, it's not our fault. He said, the bum makers can't keep up with us. Then he said, well, and the processing plant can't keep up to keep chicken to us. So we're steady running out. We get a whole shipment in, we sell it out on a day, we out for another week or two. So they're going faster than we can get them, but those people can't keep up with us. So I went to another place and their excuse was, we can't keep enough employees to even sell them. We got some in the freezer, we can't even cook them because we can't keep enough staff to keep up with the demand. Well, these were the reasonings that I was getting from them. This is why I couldn't receive one of these good chicken sandwiches. They were placing the blame off on everybody else. Well, God had to deal with my spirit and he showed me something about life and how he operates with this. Man, I thought this was, this was just absolutely great. And I want you guys to really pay attention to me with this, folks. Man, when I say this, this is a vision God gave me, this is uh, some, some, clarification God gave me, this is going to help somebody out there right now because it really helped me. It helped me a lot. It's not everybody else's problem. Whoever came up with the, with the idea, the fast food restaurant, that's where the problem is. The problem started with the idea. And what God had to show me was this. Anytime God gives you an idea, a dream, or even your purpose. He's never going to zone that to just your area code. When God gives you purpose in your life, he plans for it to go global. I'm going to say that again. God will not zone your purpose to your area code. He is going to plan for that to go global. And what I mean by that, you got to think, in God's vision. You got to have a relationship with him to say, okay, Lord, you give me this idea, but I'm not going to go with it where I want to go with it because I'll run into future adversities. I want to go where you want to go with it. So show me your vision. Let me feel what you feel with it. By doing this, you plan to go global. If you remember a few episodes ago, I told you that when I first came home from incarceration, I had a 10-year goal plan. 
That's that's what my vision was. But God had already planned for that thing to go global and fast. And what I mean by that is he completed everything in 10 months. He said, I got to get your goals out of the way so we can start getting into mine. So I'm going to do yours quickly because it's nothing. So that's what he did. He had already planned for me to go global. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I wanted to do these broadcasts because being a, a motivational speaker or inspirational speaker, I wanted it to open me up just to a different market, uh, maybe in Charlotte or the Statesville area. Little did I know God had already planned for this to go global. It doesn't just reach there or in the Columbia, South Carolina, where we're at. Little did I know God had already planned for me to go global. We're going into several different countries, not counties, not zip code, not area codes, countries. So you see, when God has a plan and he gives you some, he plans for this to go global. Well, here's the other part of that. This is why I say it falls on that. Because here's another key I want you to get. First key is this. God will not give you a purpose and zone it to your area code. He plans for it to go global. Second key to this is this. Whatever God gives you for your purpose will always be connected to somebody else. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. Let's look at the Bible. Moses had a purpose to lead God's people out of bondage. But Moses could not do it without Aaron's purpose or Miriam's purpose. They were connected to him. Aaron's purpose was the Levites was going to come from his line. But he couldn't achieve his purpose without it being connected to Moses. Moses couldn't do what he was supposed to do without being, it being connected to Joshua, vice versa. I'm going to say this again. Whatever your purpose is will always be connected to someone else. Here's where the restaurant chain failed, in my opinion. They failed to prepare the people who was connected to their purpose. Woo, let me say that again. They, they failed to prepare the people who was connected to their great idea to their dream, to their purpose. That's where it falls at. Whatever your purpose is, whatever your goal is, and let me say this about goals. When you make goals, make them big enough you can carry other people with you. Because when you get to them and you're by yourself, who are you going to enjoy them with? Always help someone else achieve their purpose by being connected to yours or vice versa, but make sure they're connected. This fast food restaurant failed to relay their vision and their purpose to the bun makers. They failed to relay it to the processing plant. They failed to, to help them uh, problem solve. How are we going to get over this dilemma so we can go global? Because right now, without these chicken sandwiches, they're losing millions. They're losing, they're losing millions. Because of their purpose that God gave them a great idea, they failed to prepare the people connected to it. When you, when you fail to prepare the people who is connected to your purpose, they will keep you in the same place. Not by their will, but by your will because you failed to prepare them. I was telling my wife, if you watch crab fishers sometimes, they'll put their crabs in a bucket. They never put a lid on them. And the reason they don't put a lid on it is once you start putting crabs in that bucket, they start climbing up the side. There's one in the bottom always going to pull the other one back down. So none of them's ever going to get out of that bucket. They'll keep pulling them back down. That's how it is when you fail to prepare people who is connected to your purpose that's supposed to go global. They will keep you in the same place you're at. So God's going to give you a global idea, but it's never going to go past your zip code because you didn't prepare the people. Got to prepare the people in your life for your goal and your purpose. Now, I'm also going to tell you this. You have to remember where God has brought you from in these ordeals. How God had to prepare me to face uh, this surgery and not worry about addiction anymore. The same way, you know, Paul says in Philippians 3 and 13, he said, listen, it's not that I know everything. He said, but the one thing I do know is I forget not the past, but I press forward 
He said, I forget the past, but I press forward to my future. That's how we have to do. We have to prepare, prepare the people. And when you remember when I was talking about that smoke in episode one and how that smoke is there to help you and it's to help other people. Well, it's also there to prepare people for future adversity. So that's why it's important to share that. Paul said, for the one thing that I do is forgetting the past and pressing forward into the future. I want to tell you tonight, whatever you're facing, God has a plan for you. No matter how bad your situation or how great it is, even when it's great, it's even greater than you expect because God plans for you to go global. And it's not always the, the big, huge global idea of going into other countries or making millions of dollars. It can be something very, very small. I'm going to share this story with you. And it's something really small, but God had to prepare me to prepare other people for what I had set my goal for. I tell the story sometimes because it's funny in a way, uh, but it reminds me of that verse that I just gave you of Philippians 3.13, you know, forgetting not where I came from, but pressing forward to where I'm going. Well, when I think back uh, early in my incarceration when I was building a relationship with God and learning more about him and changing and preparing myself beyond incarceration for global expansion for what God had for me. I was still a work in progress at that stage. I was growing. But one thing that I really looked forward to every day was dinner time. The reason it was dinner time is because at dinner time, you got to get cake or you got to get fruit. Now, the way that worked is there are two lines in prison for dinner. You got the regular line and you got the diet line. You have a medical condition or a doctor says, hey, you got high blood pressure, needs to be on a healthy heart diet. You can get on the list to be on the diet line. Well, the food's a little bit better, but it's still not really good. But on the diet line, what I used to look forward to in that healthy heart diet is you got fruit every night at supper. Every single night you was going to get fruit as part of that diet. They were going to give you peaches and juice or pears and juice or fruit cocktail and juice. And man, I used to look forward just to that little thing, that, that little luxury in a terrible place. But the thing about it was if you got fruit off the dot line, you weren't supposed to get cake at the, with, at the end of the other line. Well, for years, I got cake and I got fruit because I used to love to put the, the cake in the fruit and let the juice soak up in it. Man, that was good. When I say it was good, it was almost as good as that chicken sandwich I was telling you about. But man, let me tell you this. One day they changed the cake man. The man who gave the cake out, they, they changed. And when I went down the line and I had fruit on my tray, he went to put a piece of cake on there and I put my tray out there, he pulled it back. He said, no, nah, man, you can't get cake. I said, why not? I've been getting cake for years. He said, man, listen, you can't get cake because you got fruit. I said, you know, and naturally the old natural self wants to well up in me. Now I want to be like everybody else and say what everybody else says. Like you and him, man, you can't, who are you to tell me? You know, he said, well, you're not getting cake today. We got in a little argument, but I went on and sat down at my table, but he didn't give me any cake. And I was like, man, I've been getting cake for years. Why can't I get cake? Because I love this. I look forward to this. And when I kept sitting at that table, I started getting angrier and angrier with this guy. And God had to speak to my spirit and say, why are you angry? I put him over that cake. I don't care how long you got it. That cake is under his authority. I have prepared him to hand that cake out. So I said, man, you're right. Lord, you're right. I'm getting mad with this man that this cake is under his purpose now. So what I did was I had to start preparing the people to my goal or my purpose. And at that time, my purpose was to get cake to go back in my fruit. So I had to start preparing the people who were connected to that. So what I did was the next day, I come down the line, I got my fruit, he's standing there. And before he could even draw the cake back to say, you're not getting me, I looked and said, hey, did you make this cake today? He said, no, I didn't make this cake today. 
I said, well, if you didn't make this cake, then I don't want it. He said, wow, man. And I, I walked off. Next day, I came back. I'm coming down the line. He was just looking at me like I knew I wouldn't get cake. I said, hey, man, did you get this cake today? He said, he, I said, did you make this cake? He said, no, I didn't make this cake. I said, well, if you didn't make it, I don't want it. Only time I ever wanted is when you made it. Third day, I come down the line. Let me tell you, there's always great things that happen on the third day. Amen. But when I come down the line, I never got a chance to even ask him or say anything about that cake. That guy was looking at me and said, hey, I made this cake today. I said, you did? I said, man, I know I'm not supposed to have any, but can I please have some? Not only did I get cake that day, I got two pieces. And I got cake every day after that. Because I prepared the people to what my goal was. I prepared him. Now, my method might have been a little off of trying to reverse trick him into giving me cake. I will admit that. But I had to prepare him to achieve the goal that I was trying to do. And by doing that, not only did did I get cake, they started getting icing and making these homemade icing. And he would put icing on mine and put it in the back with his. Then I started getting cake with icing. Well, I thought I had achieved my goal, but God said this. I plan for this to go global. What he meant by that was, not only did this guy start giving me cake, but when I'm outside working out, this guy started coming out and walking around with me. We got to know one another. I got to minister to him. He got to know about my life. I got to know about him and his family. And I got to share Jesus Christ with him. That's what I mean. When you prepare the people, that's how the idea can go global. Now, global doesn't mean always reaching the masses. It could be just seeing the big picture. And the big picture in that story was one. It was me because I wanted to have Kate. And it was him because God wanted to build a relationship between us. Not only that, I got a chance to mentor that young man before he left to go to another prison. So I got to thank God that he prepared me to learn to prepare people connected to my vision. And I can't leave this story without saying this. We're going back to that fast food restaurant where they're competing with another fast food restaurant that's well known for chicken sandwiches. And here's the point I I don't want you to miss or ever forget. This other fast food chain who builds their whole business off of chicken sandwiches, who is really good as well, they honor God with everything they do. They close on Sunday. They prepare their staff to have Christian values, how to treat people, how to be nice, customer service. Quality is very important to them. They do things differently than any other company. And during the mess of this whole big chicken sandwich craze, they have not missed a beat because they had the global idea to start with, and it wasn't a chicken sandwich. It was about honoring God with everything you do. Even through this crisis, they have not missed a beat, and they're still sustaining themselves in this adversity. That's what happens when you prepare your dream and your goal with what God has for you and you prepare the people that is connected to it, you will achieve success the same exact way. And I wouldn't say this, I wouldn't, you know, I would be remiss without saying this as well. Preparing people in your life will help you get to where you need to get to. But also, too, there's other people that need you to keep functioning in the way that they need to. That's myself. That's the other broadcasters that's on this show, on their show. And I invite you to go look at them as well. We need your help to expand to a global idea for what God has for us. And you can do this by helping out by going to WYTV7.org and hit that donate button. It could be just a little amount. God can take a little amount and stretch it globally. God has a way of multiplying the fish. And we'll save that for another episode. But we need your help. And God will, I'm telling you, whatever you do in the name of Jesus, from your heart, God will bless you. And I also want to say this to you today. Anybody who is watching 
uh, on the broadcast or listening through podcasts or listening on it. I want to I want to ask you today this one simple thing: Has God prepared you to go globally? And if so, do you have that relationship with Him to see it through? Not through that, but just seeing into eternity. And if you have not did that, let me give you another verse: First John one and nine. It says, if you confess your sin, he is quick and just to forgive you of your sin, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You have not done that today. And you would like to just say this prayer. It's this simple. The same as if you're in addiction, once you're free from it, don't put your hands back to it. It's this simple. Admit your sins, you're wrong to God. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. Please, Lord, forgive me. Help me, Lord, to live a life for you. Help me to, to see your expansion, your global destination for me. Lord, give me purpose in my life or help me understand the purpose you've given me and how to use it for your glory. If you'll do that one simple thing, you'll start to see your situation, your life change. And even if you're living a good life, you'll live an even better life. Because the better life is just having peace, knowing, hey, my, my ticket to eternity is already made. And I thank God for that. Not just for for showing up in this time I was worried about addiction and this surgery, I thank God for knowing it. If, if the worst comes to worst, my, my ticket's already punched. So thank God for that. Thank God for what he's done. And I thank God for you guys. And I hope that you guys have got something out of this today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have, please let us know. Go to our website at inthegapmotivational.com. You can find out everything you need to know about our, our motivational and inspirational company. Um, you, you can go to the contacts page and see our social media pages as well. And our contact information is on there. It's itgmotivational at gmail.com. Send us an email. Let us know, hey, this is what I'm going through. What you said helped me. And that helps me prepare for future episodes. And there might be a situation you're going through that you can let me know about that we can tackle on a, another episode. Also, too, hey, if you would like for me to come speak at your church function or anything or hear the smoke is in my testimony in person, contact us. It tells you on there how to contact us. We'll work out how to, how, the details, how to get there. And I look forward to hearing you guys uh, from you guys soon. And we'll see you next time. Please come back and stand in the gap with us. See you next time.